Introduction to System Definition In this video, we are going to see about Introduction to System Definition. The system is defined as the collection of components which are grouped together to implement a particular function or a group of functions. System is an orderly arrangement of its components. The system may also refer to protocols which governs the structure and activities. The system is a group of interrelated or interdependent components forming a complex whole. The components of a system. General Theory Concepts In this video, we are going to see about General Theory Concepts. The system objectives are basically expressed in terms of the outputs it needs to produce. The inputs are given as a raw material which will be processed by the system to give the desired output. The system is guided by control. This part of the system is a decision maker and controls the activities of accepting input, processing and producing the output. The system may use feedback to control. The output is fed back to the input or to the control. The feeding back of the output allows it to be measured against some standard and adjust the processing accordingly. Characteristics of system There should be some characteristics in all systems. Some of the characteristics are as follows. Central objective Components of system Organization Interaction, Interdependence, Integration To construct a system, following elements are used. Outputs and inputs, Processor, Control, Feedback, Environment, Boundaries and Interface. Types of system. In this video, we are going to see about types of system. A major system classification divides systems into open systems, closed systems, physical systems, abstract systems, manual systems, automated systems, open systems. An open system allows interaction with its environment. It receives input from the environment and responds to them and delivers the desired outputs. Closed systems The closed system is distinct from the environment. The change of environment does not affect the system. Physical systems the physical system is perceptible by touch. Physical systems may operate statically or dynamically. Abstract systems These are conceptual. They are not physical entities. For example, abstract system is an algorithm or an equation. Manual systems In manual systems, Human beings are considered as a main processor. The input process is processed by human beings. One of the advantages of this type is human beings can think and conclude according to their past experience. The disadvantage of manual system is time consuming and also need human efforts and possibilities of errors are high. For example, customer service. Automated systems. 
Automated systems work automatically. The well-known example is computer. The illustration of types of systems. System models. In this video, we are going to see about system models. System models are used to understand and represent systems. Major models used to study and understand system are given below. Systematic model Flow system model Static system model Dynamic system model Systematic model this is an analyst, two-dimensional representation of a system, depicting the system elements and their linkage. Both information and material flow may be depicted on it. Flow system model Flow system model of an analyst shows the flow of material, energy and transformation. The concept of this model is to show the interrelationship and flows to hold a system together. It shows the orderly flow of logic. An example of such model is the CPM chart used to plan projects. Static system model. This model shows one pair of relationships such as activity, time, or cost quantity. System model This model gives a static picture of relationship. An example of a static system model is the Kant chart. Dynamic system model this kind of model is used to depict a dynamic situation, an ongoing, constantly changing system. Systems are built to solve business problems, need to be able to accept inputs and process them dynamically and also they need to adapt to the environmental changes. Manual System in this video, we are going to see about manual system. A system involving data processing which does not make use of stored program computing equipment is called as manual system. In manual system, human beings work as main processor. The work will be done by the human being on paper in his own handwriting or by typewriting. Basically, a manual system does not depend upon any computerized system. Manual-based system see information recorder which is kept in different ways such as in files in the paper form. A manual-based system is considered to be cheaper than computer-based system. Data which is stored manually in files is not very environmentally friendly and this could lead company documentation at risk if a fire broke out as there would be no backup. A manual accounting system is a way of keeping business financial records with a written ledger of transactions. Advantages of manual system Human beings are invaluable and irreplaceable processor because of their ability to accept input data and process it based on their prior knowledge and experience. Human beings can take decision based on information. Disadvantages of manual system The capacity to accept input is limited.
they get tired easily. Manual system includes human errors like transposition of figures, incorrect recording of a transaction, incomplete recording of a transaction, calculation error. Automated system In this video, we are going to see about automated system. Automated systems are systems in which work is done automatically. The main use of this kind of system is to avoid human intervention. The illustration of automated system. Automated systems use various control systems for operating equipment such as machineries, processes in factories, networks, etc. Automation systems is used to save energy and to improve quality, accuracy and precision. Automation has been achieved by including mechanical, electrical and electronic and computers in combination. The processing speed of the automated system is high comparing to that of manual systems. The possibility of error is very less. The automated system can accept many numbers of inputs and process it and produces the desired output. It can handle same operations multiple times. Types of automation The types of automated systems are as follows. Discrete control, on or off. Continuous control. Open and closed loop. System state control or sequential control. Computer control. Discrete control, on or off. The simplest type of control is on, off control. The best example is thermostat used in household appliances. Sequence control in which a programmed sequence of discrete operation is performed based on system logic which involves system states. The best example is elevator control system. Continuous control Continuous control is an advanced type of automation like aircrafts, communications and other industries includes feedback control. Open and closed loop The element which includes the measurement and control of a single variable is called as control loop. Control that uses a measured signal feed the signal back and compares it to the set point. After calculation, send a written signal to make correction which is called as closed loop. System state control or sequential control. Sequential control may be either to a fixed sequence or to a logical one that will perform different action depending on different system states. The best example is an elevator in which the system will respond depending upon the button pressed. Computer control. Computers can perform both sequential control and feedback control. Programmable logic controllers, that is PLCs, are a type of special purpose microprocessor which has replaced many hardware components such as timers. They can analyze data and create real-time graphical displays for operators and run reports for operators, engineers and management.
Automated teller machine, that is ATM, is an example in which the computer will perform a logic-derived response to a user selection based on information retrieved from the network database. The different logical responses are called as scenario. Such processes are designed using use cases and flowcharts. The illustration of state diagram for automation controls. Real Life Business Subsystem In this video, we are going to see about Real Life Business Subsystem. Information systems are used in business for a wide variety of tasks. The Real Life Business Systems are Finance, Purchases and Sales, Marketing, Stocks, Internal Administration and Payroll, etc. Finance A typical and familiar business application is financial accounting. The financial accounting systems are used for all accounting needs. The charts of accounts are set up and all the financial transactions are entered in it regularly. The system is used for the generation of the various financial books ledgers and reports like cash book, bank book, journal, balance sheet. The illustration of financial accounting. Personnel. Manpower is an important resources and personnel systems are used to keep track of this resource. Skill database are maintained where data on each individual is recorded for allocating manpower to many activities. Sales and Marketing The sales management system is used where the sales data is collected and properly analyzed by categories such as by region, product, salesperson, etc. Material A common system used for this purpose is an inventory system. In departmental store, to keep track and update the status of each item, we use the inventory system. System environments and boundaries In this video, we are going to see about system environments and boundaries. System Environments The environment is the super system within which the system operates. The environment is the source of external elements that affects the system. This is the source of external elements that determines how the system must operate. System Boundaries a system has boundaries that limit its components and processes. The system boundaries define the sphere of its control and influence. Integrated system may seem to be together to a user, but a number of systems are designed to interface and work together. Real-time systems in this video, we are going to see about real-time systems. Real-time system is an online system in which the processing takes place immediately and the updated files are made available immediately. Real-time system need very fast response and they also need to be very reliable. Real-time system is the processing of information system which has to respond within a definite period of time to the external input stimuli. Pattern of real-time system Hard real-time system 
soft real time system firm real time system weekly hard real time system hard real time system hard real time systems are considered to be safe an overrun in the response time leads to loss of life or financial damage soft real time system deadline overrun or tolerable but not encouraged there are no consequences of missing one or more deadlines firm real time system the computation is no longer used if the job is not finished on time cost may be interpreted as a loss of revenue weekly hard real time system in most cases feedback control system the control becomes unstable with too many missed control cycles weekly hard real time system is suitable if the system has to meet other failures for example emi distributed systems in this video we are going to see about distributed systems distributed systems a distributed system combines the advantage of both centralized and decentralized systems systems where a central computer does the processing are called as centralized system centralized systems use a central resource and are totally dependent on it and collapse if it crashes systems where no resources are common are called as decentralized system Decentralized systems are small and independent. They end up in a lot of redundant data and redundant work. Advantages of distributed systems. Redundancy of data is eliminated. Data access is quick. Resource utilization is better. disadvantages of distributed systems redundancy of data occurs maintenance is problem as there are too many different systems on different platforms security is lower steps need to be taken to protect confidentiality and integrity of data basic principles of successful system in this video we are going to see about basic principles of successful system a system which meets all the below functions are said to be a successful system the system should be of use to the user the system should be ready in time to be used system should give visible benefits system should be maintained effectively for sustained use system should be well documented system should follow the design of predefined system system should be relevant and accurate structured system analysis and design in this video we are going to see about structured system analysis and design structured system analysis and design that is ssadm is a methodology for analysis and design purpose of information systems
Structured system analysis and design method is a set of standards developed in the early 1980s for system analysis and application design. It uses a combination of text and diagrams throughout the whole life cycle of a system design from the initial design idea to actual physical design of the application. The main objectives of structured system analysis and design are as follows. To develop better quality systems. To improve project management and control. To establish a framework for good communications between participants in a project. SSADM uses a combination of three techniques. Logical data modeling. Data Flow Modeling Entity Behavior Modeling Logical Data Modeling The process of identifying, modeling and documenting the data requirements of the system being designed. The data is separated into entities, things about which a business needs to record information and relationships, the association between the entities. Data flow modeling. The process of identifying, modeling, and documenting how data moves around an information system is called as data flow modeling. This model examines processes, that is, activities that transform data from one form to another, data stores, holding area for data, external entities, what sends data into a system or receives data from a system, data flows, routes by which data can flow, entity behavior modeling. The process of identifying, modeling, and documenting the events that affects the each entity and sequence in which these events occur. Prototype In this video, we are going to see about Prototype. Prototype Prototype is a basic working model of a product or information system which is built for demonstration purpose or as a part of the development process. Prototype can be built using any computer language or development tool but special prototyping tools have been developed to simplify the process. Using prototyping as a development technique, the analyst works with the users to determine the initial requirements for a system. The analyst then quickly builds a prototype. When the prototype is completed, the users work with it and tell the analyst what they like and do not like about it. Prototyping offers the best way to test what looks great and is fit for purpose, whether it is for a website or a piece of software. The prototype is developed based on the currently known requirement. The use of prototype gives the client an actual feel of the system, since the interactions with the prototype can enable the user to understand the requirements of the desired system. The prototype is not a complete system and many of the details are not built in the prototype. The goal is to provide a system with overall functionality. The diagrammatic representation of prototype model. Advantages of prototyping. Quicker use of feedback is available leading to better solutions. Errors can be detected much earlier. Missing functionality can be identified easily. Confusing or difficult functions can be identified. Disadvantages of prototyping Incomplete applications may cause application 
not to be used as a full system was designed incomplete or inadequate problem analysis. This methodology may increase the complexity of the system as scope of the system may expand beyond original plans. This will lead to implementing and repairing way of building systems. Joint Application Development In this video, we are going to see about Joint Application Development. Joint Application Development JAD, is a new process for collecting information system requirements and reviewing system designs. JAD is a methodology that involves the client or end user in the design and development of an application through a succession of collaborative workshops called JAD sessions. The illustration of JAD faces. The primary purpose of JAD in analysis phase is to collect system requirements simultaneously from the people involved in the system. JAD sessions are usually conducted in a place other than the usual place where the people normally work. A JAD may last anywhere from 4 hours to an entire week and may consist of several sessions. The typical participants in JAD are listed below. JAD session leader Users Managers Sponsor, System Analyst, IS Staff. When a JAD is completed, the end result is a set of documents that details the world of the current system related to the study of a replacement system. Role and Need of System Analyst in this video, we are going to see about role and need of system analyst. System analyst is a person who determines the problems and needs of an organization to estimate how people, data processes, communications and information technology can best enhance improvements for the business. System analyst is thus a person who bridges the gap between the users and the experts. System analyst is needed to understand the problem of the users and the needs of the organization and determine how best a combination of manual procedures is used to develop a system using his skill. The illustration of role of system analyst. System analyst can do the following process. System development. Data administration. Telecommunication, End User Requirements, Computer Operations, System Development. The system analysts and programmers are organized to support the information systems and applications for specific business functions. The Center for Excellence is a group of experts who establishes and enforces methods, tools, techniques and quality for all system development projects. They provide consulting and mentoring services for all projects. Data Administration Data Administration manages the data and information resource in the organization. Telecommunication This center designs, constructs and manages the computer network that has become essential to most businesses. Network analyst performs designing local and wide area network that will ultimately be used by systems and applications. End user requirements it provides installation services, training and help desk services. It supports the growing base of personal computers. Computer Operations 
This center runs the entire shared computer, including mainframes, mini computers, and no departments and no department servers. Qualifications and Responsibilities In this video, we are going to see about Qualifications and Responsibilities. Qualifications Qualification denotes the skills that are required for a system analyst. Personality skills that an analyst needs includes Communication Understanding Ability Marketing Training The illustration skills needed for an analyst A system analyst has to be an effective communicator The analyst should be a good listener and have an open mind. Analyst needs to convince persons about the changes that need to be made. In short, analyst should be a good marketer. Academic qualification of an analyst can be in the field of Computers, Engineering, Mathematics, Science, Management, Accounting, The analysts are not fresher from the college. They must have some prior working experience. Responsibilities Responsibility denotes the functions that any system analyst should carry on before starting up the project. The responsibility of a system analyst is high because if any misinterpretation happens, it might lead to serious issues. Analyze the existing business systems and their problems. Analyze new requirements. Documentation of old system. Convincing management of the new system. Participating in support activities like user training, user documentation preparation, etc. System Analysis as a Profession In this video, we are going to see about System Analysis as a Profession. A system Analyst works in the computer department of a company providing the research and information necessary to maintain an up-to-date computer system. System Analyst would also provide cost-benefits analysis to make any proposed changes. The route to a system analysis profession is to earn a bachelor's degree in computer or information science. To understand business operations and which technologies might serve a specific business model, a master's degree in business with an emphasis in computer technology might best serve a specific business. The Diagrammatic Representation of System Analyst